Well, good morning and welcome to Fort Hill Earthworks in Southern Ohio. Now, Alana and I have been here before, but it's been quite some time and that's because one of our favorite trails has been down for maintenance for a little over a year. They just wrapped that up about a month ago uh, and I think they might have even added a new trail. So Alana and I are looking forward to a visit here to uh, check out the repairs, see what they did to that because this used to be one of our favorite little hiking spots. It's about an hour from home. And uh, one of the really neat things when it gets cold, <laughs> which it is now, it's like a 43 degree start for us um, here this morning. It's going to get up into the 60s. But anyway, uh, we can dress a little bit lighter because when we start out, it's straight uphill for a good stretch and that gets our heat going and everything like that. Uh, also today, I'm going to do a massive gear update. Really, I need to rewind time a little bit, go back to Christmas where I announced that I ordered, I had a new camera, I had a new action camera, I now have a new drone. I want to talk to you about all that equipment, experiences I've had with it, why I made the changes, and what changes may be yet to come. So um, I was hoping to do another video for that, it just hasn't worked out, so I'm going to add it into this hiking day and review but for now i am a little chilly so i need to get moving here we go okay so time out for the beginning from the end uh I, long and short of this is that i ended up doing the two things i said i was going to do so i did a gear update and a hiking and trail review of the location and i got a little wordy with kind of both of those all in good sense but i realized i may have two audience people so i am going to use the chapter section throughout this if I'm getting really boring with the gear, you don't care. You can zoom forward to get the next little blurb on the hike. If you care the other way around, then you know what to do. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so excuse my uh, out of breathness, but we're we're halfway up this initial hill, and uh, we're trying to anyway. In the last video at Lake Catherine, I talked about the lack of trillium there because the deer, who, <laughs> because the deer had eaten it all. And uh, anyway, there's some trillium. I'll get a closer shot here in B-roll as soon as I shut my app. But there's quite a bit of trillium here, and then if I'm not going to try to go too Blair Witch on you here, but. There's a bunch as we head uh, up this hill behind us. So anyway, if you haven't seen Trillium, it is uh, in abundance here. And uh, well, here it is close. A little bit here about Fort Hill. This entire area is another Hopewell earthworks. Now that's the Hopewell Indians are really common. They were very prevalent throughout all of the Southern Ohio and the Ohio River Valley. Directly over my head is actually the earthworks. This is not a formal shape like what you would see with the Serpent Mound. It's also really close to here. Some of the other earthworks that are more of a circular shape. This is a little more 
I want to call it obtuse, but it's not a regular um, shape, I guess regular. you could call it. It's an irregular shape. But anyway, that large mound is not natural. That was all made by the Hopewell Indians. And uh, if you want to read more about that or anything else, um, Ohio DNR actually does a really good job to talk about Arc the earthworks. Of Appalachia. Arc of Appalachia is another good source for that. I'll put some links in the description below if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, these areas and how they were formed. As far as this nature preserve, it's unique in a few ways. One, wildflowers are of abundance. In fact, a good friend of mine, uh, Carrie Sherrill, Sherrill Photography, we were out on a hike one day for some waterfalls and he says, oh look, there's Trillium. And he was super excited and he hadn't seen very much. And we had been hiking here for some time and I'm like, yeah, so what, Trillium, it's everywhere. You see it all the time. But then as, as we've hiked more in Ohio, we found where it's not around all the time. In fact, it gets eaten pretty heavily by the deer, as we mentioned in last videos from, at Lake Catherine. That's not the case here. They do hunts here, similar to what ran us away initially from Lake Catherine, yeah. around Thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving. So that's something to watch out for. And that's something that I would say as an outdoorsy type folks mm -hmm. here in Ohio, that can be quite difficult because we, we're not hunters other than with the camera. I, I hunt with my camera. I don't follow hunting seasons. and, and it is not publicized well. There's a number of times we show up to hike at a place, it's a hunting season. So we just result to wearing orange like we're hunters anytime we think it is hunting season. But there's even off season stuff like squirrel and, and weird things that we don't know until we pass someone in orange with a gun in the woods. But um, anyway, that's one thing to be aware of. This nature preserve also allows dogs to hike with you. So if you like to hike with your doggo, uh, this is a good place as long as you keep them on a leash, it's absolutely allowed. And that's a rarity for yes. hiking trails in an Ohio nature preserve. So um, that's some extra stuff in here. Speaking of wildflowers, I've taken quite a bit of B-roll. I'm going to share that with you here when I shut up. But first, I promised gear updates. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is my GoPro Hero 9 along with the media module. module. Now, I have mixed reviews on this camera. And before I begin with that, let me tell you first why I switched to it. This PGI Y Tech telescoping little tripod action has done a tremendous job with B-roll for me. In fact, I started my channel with a DJI Osmo action. Um, a year and a half, maybe two years ago, and almost everything I did was was with that camera. Where it started to let me down and what prompted me to move to the Z6 that I'm talking to you on now is that whenever you get in woods sort of like this, where it's really thatchy and there's a lot going on, uh, due to YouTube's compression and everything, if you do panning and tilting, especially if I do any color grading whatsoever, uh, the, the video really falls apart, gets very pixelated. And uh, I'm sure if you look at some of my older videos, you'll see where that occurs. And I have been trying really hard to resolve that. Uh, whether I shoot 4K and upload in 4K, whether I shoot 4K, upload 120, 120, I have not found a good consistent way to deal with the compression of YouTube where I can show uh, really thatchy condensed woods with really any amount of motion uh, with that. A channel that I follow uh, was using all GoPros, not specifically the GoPro Hero 9, but they were using a camera in a similar way. And I, I'm sorry, I don't remember now. This is kind of old where it prompted me to want this, but I noticed they were able to do further color grading and do some things with their GoPro footage. And I thought, let me try. So I got the GoPro Hero 9 and I love the fact that with the media module, I had a built-in mic. I do wish they had a dead cat instead of sort of the foamy. Let me, uh, I can kind of bring that up there. It just sort of has a foamy uh, mic cover and uh, it, it works pretty well. In fact, everything we did in our Death Valley trip mm -hmm was done with the, uh, was done almost all of my talking yeah. was all done with this camera just because of its convenience. It allowed me to carry another camera uh, and take that on. Where the Z6 has fallen apart for me, even though it has allowed better footage and better color grading is um, this, just the stabilization, right? So I have to be more sure of myself. And as I've tried to upload in 4K, that means I can't do uh, editing moves where it used to be I had 4K footage, but I could then, because I was uploading at 120, I had a lot of room where I could do panning and cropping and zooming and a lot of movement uh, in post really, where I could just use a piece of that footage. And I used to really take it that way. So uh, the reason I switched to uploading in 4K is that I noticed a lot, of my, a lot of my watchers are doing it from their TVs. And presumably most people have 4K TVs or at least many people have 4K TVs now. So I've tried to do that. I also thought I might've been getting around some of those compression things. Anyway, back to this, I'm sorry, I'm waffling a bit. Um, 
back to this camera. I have been very happy with it. It's very convenient to use. The modes work well. It does 4K 60. It really does everything that the Osmo Action did, but I, it does appear that I can push the footage it with color grading a little bit further before it falls apart, but I do mean a little bit further. The negatives and where it's mixed reviews is specifically with the media module and GoPro as a company. Um, this media module, I was having a bunch of problems where I would have to disassemble it, take it out, unplug the battery, plug the battery back in because it was getting locked up. I would go to record and it wouldn't, it'd be locked up. I'd just have a bunch of problems. In fact, if you watch the Death Valley footage, some of my outro funny things was starting to complain. Is it recording? I don't know. It's locked up again. What's it doing? And that was all problems as a result. Yeah. I was in communication with, because this was a, a very new thing. In yeah. fact, I was one of the first people to get the media module from B&H Photo. I was, I was a pre-order person. Yes. You actually got it for me for yes. Christmas. And, uh, and it but came she, after Christmas. It came after Christmas. Anyway, uh, I was communicating with them about this lockup feature, and I just found really a sense of complacency and almost as though it was my fault. I was trying to be an active participate, right. active participant in finding to resolution. In the end, I got so frustrated with GoPro themselves in the trying to resolve it. Even when they finally admitted I had a bad media module, their resolution on how to get me a new one was so convoluted that I called B&H Photo. That's who I bought it from. There's no sponsorships here. Yeah. B&H took, took care of me right away. They sent me out another one. I sent them the one back and this new one I have not had any issues with. So um, I do like it for all action camera purposes, but I do still prefer the video quality that comes out of either my Nikon Z6 or now my Nikon Z7 II. So anyway, that's the update on the GoPro Hero 9. Would I recommend it? Um, I've been happy with it. I like the front screens. Video For an action camera, it's, it's, it's a good balance between having a decent vlog camera and an action camera because it is a little larger yeah. than some of the just pure action cameras that are out there. When it comes to being rowdy with a camera, I still am using my Osmo Action um, just because it's a little smaller and I feel like I can throw it around and kind of pack it away a little easier. Um, I think that's it for now. I do have a lot more to update with yep. footage, but I'm going to get back to the hike because our getting a little chilly. Yeah, our warmth that went away is starting to leave us. So there you go. Let's go. Okay. There's a lot of colors. I don't know where to go. See a lot of colors. Only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze The dreams are not the same for me Drowning in the sea There's too many voices Talking back at me There are a lot of choices Waiting to be made Too many choices Making me afraid We have just been having a lovely hike yeah. in many, many, many wildflowers. Uh, just the whole hills are completely full of not only trillium, but a bunch of other things. So if you're tired of seeing flower b-roll, well, 
too bad. Sorry. I'm having fun looking at it. <laughs> uh, we are just now at uh, it's Canby's Mountain mm -hmm. Lovers trail. Loop Trail, Trail yeah, Loop, trail. something like that. Uh, we're at least at the connection of it. Now we're actually hiking the Gorge Loop yep. counterclockwise from the parking lot. And I will tell you both when we've been hiking in here now and when we have in the past done Canby's Loop, um, you feel like you should be making your exit to cross the water. Yes, you do actually cross this water in two places. Uh, it's just a little bit downstream. Yeah, yeah. This is. It's just a little bit downstream from here is actually the the connection. So the trail uh, goes along the land back a little bit and then you cross. So if you don't want to get your feet wet, that might be out. If you are looking for it, it is a lovely hike. I do Very recommend nice. it. Yep. But. Um, you have no data in here. GPS is even pretty sketchy in some spots. So uh, what I'll say is if you're working counterclockwise as we have done, you're really looking to pass your second set of steps. One is some sketchy wood ones that yes. I had kind of hoped that they would repair. I've probably already showed you those in B-roll. They didn't. Um, then we found the two repairs that they've made. They were lovely, one of which was the second set of steps. So the concrete steps, you'll come then back down towards the water and you'll see the connection. There is a metal sign there now. There wasn't actually. No, there wasn't. So when we new. yeah when we did it so uh, anyway if you're hiking want to do that trail that's fine uh, my my gear update um, first let me back up to one thing that I didn't cover on the action camera and why I've stopped using action cameras or or why often I will opt for the Z6 even over the Z7 II is um, low light. It's really pretty dark here today. We have very thick cloud cover. And even with the Z6, it has the full size sensor, full size 35 millimeter or 35 millimeter sensor. So a full size sensor, uh, but it's only that 25 megapixel. So it really does very well with low light performance. And that's something that just is horrific with any action camera that I found. So unless it's really bright and really sunny, I always opt for the Z6. And since we start a lot mm -hmm. in very near dark or we're out until dark often, I have been opting for, opting for the Z6. Right. When we were at uh, Congaree National Park, yes. I tried to solely use the Z7. I could not be more happy with having 4K 60 frames a second. I could not be more happy with the photos I got from it, but even it did not perform as well with low light focus and its low light performance over my Gen 1 Z6. Right. I hear you, Goose. I I hear you. Uh, so anyway, uh, my actual tech update isn't any of that. It's on drones. So I just got a new drone. Yep. I got the first gen. Well, it's not. It's actually second gen. So I have a Mavic Air 2, not the 2S or whatever they just recently released. Right. Uh, because they released it, I found B&H actually had some of their show, their brand new Fly More kits that went like on sale the week before. So I got a screaming deal on it and I picked up one of those. What I have had for a very long time, mm -hmm. Uh, Christmas two years ago. Yes. Is the Mavic Air. Now that, the or the Mini, the Mavic Air Mini. Yes. We might get they're a right landing. There. We're going to get no, a they're, landing. They're right there. Oh, okay. I got they're excited. They're in the water. They're in the water. <laughs> Shush, I'm trying to record over here. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, you so, know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, so why the change? Well, one of the things is because I had the Gen 1 um, Mavic Air Mini, Mini. Yes. Uh, it was 2.7K. And as I mentioned earlier, I've been trying to do more and more 4K okay. footage. So the upscaling sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. But also that first gen is Wi-Fi only. Mm -hmm. And I have had now three flyaway conditions mm -hmm. and about a half a dozen others that I avoided. Yes. So much so that I have really stopped carrying it or even using it. Like every time I fly, I'm like, this could be the time it's done. And literally moments ago, I think it's done. So what happens is, really? Really what happens is, is every time um, you get in a rocky terrain or anything that has any sort of Wi-Fi weird refraction banging around, I don't know, I'm not that good with all the network stuff, yeah. but I notice anytime I'm in a gorge and not out on super open, very flat terrain, it'll fly away on you. It'll just take off one way or the other. This happened altitude to me. Altitude warning. Yeah, I got an altitude warning and I, there was, n what? Like, so what I normally do to avoid the issues is I will take off and then I'll just make sure that it's actually going to hover right because sometimes it won't. Sometimes the moment it takes off, mm -hmm. it starts going left, right, right, up, down, something or that, and I immediately land it and can't fly here. 
Um, normally when I can hover, it's been okay, but I, my first flyaway was at Lake Vesuvius. Vesuvius Lake yes. Vesuvius took off over open water. Luckily I was able to get Thank it going right. sideways and I got it back to land. Yep. I had it take off at a hike. I don't remember what we were I'm doing, sure that one. but it started getting freaked out about altitude. Oh, and when I went to Huffing land, Hills. Yeah, no, uh, yes, where it went to go straight yes. up, I was able to get it back down. Anyway, I've had a couple flyaways and in different directions. It just happened to me moments here ago, I was going to get some nice B-roll going down the water here, um, and all of a sudden it started crying about altitude warning. I was not able to go up, I was not because of the altitude limit. Yep. I was not able to go down because apparently it thought I was in a gap between altitude ceiling mm -hmm. and the floor of about three feet, because all of a sudden it said, landing. and it landed square in the water. In the water. So um, I don't know if I got the footage for any of today. I Hopefully, have used it a little bit. It was near the bank. It was near the bank, so I got it back. We'll throw it in some yeah. rice and I'll I'll post up whether it actually comes back to life in any shape, form or another, but I think it's done. So now I'm down to just having the Mavic Air 2. I am looking forward to that because it uses um, both the 2.4, it uses some radio frequencies in addition to it. So it, it changed the remote. Now, if you're looking at a Mavic Air Mini, Two, they changed that radio controller in that. Not only did they go to 4K60, which is what made the news, but they put the same controller that would be used with the Mavic Air 2 and other things. And I, I think this issue I'm having with Flyaway is not, uh, I, my opinion is it's probably not that uncommon. So if you're not having it, rock on. I've actually loved it. I'm not, I've loved the drone. I, I hope it still works for times. All of my footage out at winging it was done mm -hmm. with that camera. Yep. It's been great to, to use, but it's gotten to where I'm scared to use it. So I got a new drone. Um, with that said, I kind of updated you on the, the Nikon Z7 II. That was just because I wanted a large sensor. I, I've always wanted that Nikon 47-ish, 45, 47-ish megapixel um, sensor that was in the D850. And uh, because I'm kind of converting over all mirrorless, I wanted that camera. I've been super happy with it. I just... I'm almost so happy that I haven't been carrying it that much. Nope. It's like, it's like my, my little precious. It's my precious. It I don't, I don't really want to, to carry it, which is a weird thing, uh, so I keep using the Z6. Anyway, back to the trail? Uh, yeah. Back to the trail. There is a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole again? Wait, hold on Put me together Take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone Wait, hold on Put me together Take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone Take you back to my youth And show you what I wish I knew My will is strong with a place to lean In the moment I hung best belief The other ring of my wrist is gold Pairing with the light it holds When I return from my skin and bone I'm remembering the words you told Well there you go, the gorge loop trail here at where are we at we're at Fort, Fort Hill, Hill uh, Nature Preserve yep. and again this is one of our favorites I'm very thankful that it's back open yes um, a couple of corrections on the trail as we kind of as we wrap up and talk about it uh, one is that we kind of talked about if you go counterclockwise yes 
And one of the things they've been doing is updating a lot of the signage. And we noticed on our way out that that's your only option now. So it is one way with good reason. Because yes. the other thing I would note is that there's several points on on really all the trails in here, but especially that gorge loop. And if you went over and did, that's Canby's, right? Mountain Lover. Yeah, yeah the one across the Canby's stream. Mountain Lover. If you went to do either one of those, be prepared for a pretty narrow track that's off camber. It's a little slanted towards a, the hill. a, a pretty steep a pretty steep drop yeah. off. Uh, and it would be because of that that we have long said that I would avoid hiking here. It Because it's at that slant, it drains off well, but I would yes. avoid hiking here during or immediately after a rain. Give yes. it some time to dry off. Once it does, the dirt has quite a bit of clay in it and it's pretty sticky in most spots. The exception would be uh, there are some spots where it isn't slanted and it, it's kind of bowled out. It's, right. You're not as worried about slipping off, but you are then in mud deep mud yes yeah it's uh there, there can be some pretty soft oh, spots yeah. whenever you're here plan on getting your feet a little dirty yes um there's a lot of natural streams and the, natural the springs springs i'm sorry that you're gonna cross and uh the the end result is that there's water the whole way so right. um, as far as timing i would say now yes it's gorgeous this, there's so much going on even beyond the, the wild flowers on mm -hmm. the ground the floor yes um, the red buds uh, that didn't get damaged with the snow we had earlier this yes. week. We had like three, four inches of snow, and red buds don't take the load very well. They're kind of no. fragile. So some of those broke, and but the, the red buds and dogwoods are yep. really blooming and flowering as well. So it's just an absolutely beautiful time. And we noticed in most of the flower, there's still quite a few buds. So we, I actually yes. believe we've hit it pretty early. Um, Trillium, maybe, maybe not, but middle. most of the other yeah. flowers pretty yeah, yeah. early. So I think you have at least another week when this airs. Plan this weekend if you're in the area uh, when you see that. So your this weekend, not our this weekend. That wouldn't no. make much sense, would it? No. So anyway, great hike, great place. We loved it. Uh, there is still some places where you got to do some dancing. There's some bad stairs yes. and a little uh, bridge that uh, that's out. Catwalk. It's all It's all yeah. doable. But uh, I, I hope that there's enough funding to continue repairing this area yes. because uh, if you can see, and I'll actually take a little bit of, a, well, you've seen it now, B-roll of sort of the gazebo. That's not really a gazebo. But no, it's a lot bigger than a gazebo. What do you call that thing? You Party can, room? Yeah, you can kind of rent it out. Yeah. This, this room kind of back behind me and this little bridge, this little area, it's just really, Very nice. it's really pretty. Yes. So I hope, uh, I hope that they continue to improve upon it. Uh, as far as gear, the last real yes. gear is what I'm talking to you on, and I hope it's better than my last attempt at Congaree National Park. Yes. And that is the Cinco, I want to say De Mayo, but these, <laughs> these Cinco <laughs> mic kit. Huh. Now, I, again, was this a Christmas gift or did I buy these? No. Uh, actually, it was a Christmas gift, but then you said you were going to buy them. So I'm like, well, I already did. <laughs> right. So this was in my <laughs> wish list that Alana bought for Christmas. And the reason I got these is because it was before the Rode Wireless Go, the yeah, the Rode Wireless mm -hmm. Go, before dual they mic. had a dual mic setup. So, right. So when I first embarked on this channel, it was just me and Alana was really kind of avoiding the camera all the I time. I was just eye candy too. <laughs> yeah, well, you didn't even really like <laughs> no. that. Like you preferred me doing B-roll and kind of leaving you out of the whole mix. That went to <laughs> then where you were okay being the subject in B-roll. <laughs> and now you kind of like chatting in on it. So it's anyway, open. the channel has my name only because, well, I don't want to change it again. It's still new, but uh, <laughs> it's still really. <laughs> anyway, what a it's waffle. I. So I was looking for a mic where we could mic each of us up and kind of do a mono left and right and dual channels now the last time I tried these uh, it's supposed to have a function where it can remain in stereo and merge those in but what I found was one ended up overriding the other yeah. and it would actually kind of do some weird clipping and um, it's bad audio but if you watch the wrap-up of our Congaree National Park yeah. video you'll see where I tried these mics in the past I do hope they're working better now I have been so happy with my Rode Wireless Go that I used in another, that for the yeah, rest of this video, last... except for right now, where we're both intentionally yeah. talking. It's where I went from a dead cat, a dead black cat, to a dead skunk. skunk. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had been using the Wireless Go, and now that they have a dual channel, I think I'd go with that. If for no other reason than it has a display on it where you're sure what is left, what is right, what is A, what is mm, B, and yes. when you're adjusting the audio levels, you can see it. This has literally been a 15-minute hunt and peck that I hope I have sorted out. because Count, Counting, not, ABC, They're not singing. marked A or B or anything, no. so I, I really don't know how that's, this is going to work. Uh, I do hope it works well. Yes. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, the only other gear, and this one's super easy, 
uh, you got me this um, Peak Designs. Peak Design, some kind of Whambadine clamp V2. I think they have a V3 now. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's I have Very used nice. that on two different bags, and I have been keeping my camera right here on my chest. It helps load my bag front to back, so I don't have so much trying to pull me backwards down a hill. I actually like it out in front. It's also very quick to grab, which is another reason I'm using my larger cameras, the Z6 yes. or Z7, more for video than the action cameras. It used to be I used the action camera because it was it was out, easy to carry right. in my hand all the time, but now that I've got a better camera close, I've been using that. Yep. So there you go. My call to action for you before I wrap this thing up is, I just, put, I just put this up at HD or 1080p, and I did that so that I could do some punch zooms and some other things that uh, I would prefer. I was also able to use higher frame rates for some little bit of slow-mo on a few clips. And my question is, do you prefer the videos that I have been doing here as of late that are in 4K? Is that a benefit to you and your TV, or do you care at all? Or did you actually like me to being able to be smoother and do some things at 1080? I'm really curious kind of where my audience is. I think... It's kind of 50-50. Half of you seem to be watching on TV, and half of you seem to be watching on your phone. I wouldn't think those of you on your phone would give a hoot. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really, I'm really curious how that where that works out. Other than that, we are ready to go on our New England trip. Our next thing is to pack the truck yes. up and get North ready. East, We're going to be in all the yes. New England states. Alana and I have many that we have not visited. We're excited about that. We're going to be a little ahead of the main season, I think. Uh, a lot of things yes. are just opening up some of the campgrounds and we're things going we're staying in. Right before, right before holiday. Yeah, right before. So the only other video that you're probably going to see from me until I start publishing all of our New England trip will be, I'm going to do a whole separate Wilma, the truck update, oh, yes. because we, I have made some changes to that. We now yep. have a different power solution. We've got a yes. heater. Um, yes. I think I've New. got a, a plan for um, keeping the tent dry. Conditional storage. We've done some changes to storage. So anyway, uh, yes. a whole separate update on the truck because she will be the star in the yes. New England trip. Yeah. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this long-winded video. I'll see you either in that update or in New England next time. Thanks. <laughs> Subscribe. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.